What? Filmception. Hey there, it's Red. I don't know about you guys, but around here, along with fall, comes our gray overcast days, we've got rain, and it is just absolutely wonderful. And of course, one of my favorite things to do when it's raining is to sit inside bundled up with the sound of the rain in the background while I read. Now my reading habits always alter with the weather, so I always have a distinct type of book that I prefer to read when it's raining. So I thought that I would give you guys a list of recommendations to read on a rainy day. The first recommendation I have for you guys is no surprise I'm sure, and that is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Vampire books are a very fall, rainy day read for me. And when you get Twilight that takes place in Forks, Washington with never-ending rain, I can't think of a better book to read on a rainy day than the Twilight series. The weather fits, the vampires fit, it's just perfect. The next recommendation I have for you guys is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. And either you've heard a lot about this book or read it, I'm sure. But for those of you who have not, this is about a boy who finds a bunch of old photographs about these peculiar children from his grandfather. And in order to deal with his grandfather's death, he chooses to go to the place his grandfather grew up and to try and find the old schoolhouse that his grandfather was always talking about. But things turn out to be a little bit more magical and mysterious than he originally suspected. And it's just so great. The photographs the historical content, the creepiness is just so perfect for a rainy day. So perfect. The next one I have for you is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. Now I'm telling you guys, there's nothing better for a rainy day than vampires. And this book is absolutely phenomenal and perfect for a rainy day. It just has that dark setting. You don't even have to be reading it at night to feel like you're constantly in the zone of darkness. This society has distinct areas called cold towns, which are restrictive areas where if you're a vampire, if you could potentially become a vampire, you get sent to these cold towns. This is to kind of keep the rest of society fairly safe. Tana, our protagonist, wakes up after a party and everyone is dead. Everyone. And she is worried that she's going to become a vampire. So along with her ex-boyfriend and this random guy they found tied up, they make their way to the nearest cold town where craziness and creepiness ensue. The next one is Shatter Me by Tata Muffy. This book is so dark. The tones in it are so dark because you're dealing with Juliet's depression and her angst and figuring out who she is and whether she's good, whether she's bad, and having such dark people surround her and want to use her in such a negative society. And the creepiness of it and the darkness of it and the very dystopian tones in it are very, very great for a rainy day. This is if you have that really dark rainy day, maybe it's even nighttime, is a great time to start this book because this is the type of book that's really going to match your settings. The next one I have for you guys is another contemporary and that is Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delera. This is about a girl that's dealing with the aftermath of her sister's death and she deals with it by writing letters to dead celebrities, Kurt Cobain, Judy Garland, Amy Winehouse, and the entire book is composed of her letters. It's a very interesting way to tell the story, but again, it's dealing with those darker emotions, her depression, her social anxieties, and there's all these settings, like sometimes in a forest at night, even rainy days, and I feel like oftentimes the setting of the book just very much feels like a rainy day because realistically her entire life has become one long rainy day. So it's kind of perfect. The next one I have for you guys is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. It didn't really impact me how much I loved this book when I first finished it. First I thought it was just okay, it didn't get to me that much, but the more and more I thought about this book, the more I started to realize how much I loved it. And I think that's because this is the perfect rainy day book. It takes place in Portland, and if you guys know anything about Portland weather, weather, it rains a lot, it's very damp, it's very cloudy, and the weather in this book matches accordingly. This is about a girl named Mia. After a tragic accident with her family, she's in a coma, and she has to decide whether or not she's going to wake up 
or if she's gonna let go. It is honestly such a beautiful story and being able to learn about her family and her relationship and her life and match with the overall very gray tone of the entire book and this sadness that just hovers over it. It just feels gray and gloomy like a rainy day and it is absolutely perfect. Next one I have for you guys I couldn't in no way exclude from this list and that is The Unbecoming of Bar Dyer by Michelle Hodkins. When it's a rainy day I love dark books. I love creepy books and that is exactly what this series is. This book is just so mysterious and so creepy and Mara Dyer is absolutely one of the darkest characters that I've ever had the pleasure of reading and getting to know her and getting to decide exactly what kind of a person that she is because she's not the regular protagonist. It's just all sweet and loving. She is a very she has a lot of conflict with her inner self in deciding what type of a person that she is and dealing with all the creepy circumstances that have been happening. It's a very hard book for me to tell you what it's about because it's very difficult to explain it without spoiling it for you, but this book keeps you on your toes and keeps you just completely enveloped in the mystery that is this book. And the darkness around this makes it so perfect for a rainy day that I wish I could forget the entire series just so I could have the joy of reading it for the first time all over again. So that is all for my rainy day reading recommendations. I know for me personally my mood varies so much with the weather and when it's raining out, when it's gray, I look forward to those days because I know I'm going to be wanting to pick up, pick up one of those darker creepier books on my bookshelf that I haven't wanted to read all spring or summer. During the spring, during the summer, I love the very happy, sunshiny books. I love things, I love my books to match the weather. And when it's raining, I look so forward to those days. One, because I love the rain. And two, because I can finally pick up those dark, gloomy, creepy books that have been sitting on my bookshelves for months that I didn't want to read during the spring or during the summer because the weather just didn't match them. That is all for this video. I will have more videos out soon. I'll talk to you guys later.